A friend of mine gave me this key 10 years ago because I collect keys. She said she found it in her dad's drawer. I've been collecting keys my whole life and never saw one like this. It's a blank key with a pivot and spring labeled Yale and Town Manufacturing Company and made in USA stamped on it. I can't figure out what the use is for the pivot and spring. Some sort of specialty lock maybe. Any ideas? It's a post office box lockout key. From my research, it was made between 1880 to 1900. The purpose of this key is to deny service to a non-paying post office box customer. The key is inserted by the postal worker from the inside of the P.O. box. The warding is a reverse of the customer's key, and it clips into one of the outer sleeve chamber holes, so the customer cannot use their key to push out the lockout key. Does anyone know about the logo on this antique monkey wrench? The previous owner insisted the tool is over 100 years old. I just want to know the manufacturer. Thanks in advance for the help. This tool was made by the Whitman and Barnes Manufacturing Company. It's likely at least 100 years old. They were in business from 1877 to 1920. The identifying marks with the various combinations of W and B or W and B Company in a diamond outline. You can see here the trademark that is stamped on your wrench. It's likely made between 1914 to 1920, as 1914 is when made in was mandated. Prior to that, it most likely would have just said USA. We took a tour of an old Victoria mansion. Not even the tour guide could tell us what this was. It's rather flimsy and sharp on one edge. Any ideas? It's a grapefruit sectioner from the 1950s to 60s. The box is marked Alfred E. Nobler and Company of Munichi, New Jersey and made in Japan. Push forwards and downwards following the inside of the skin, keeping the cutting blades on both sides of the web. Then pull backward and upwards and repeat this action until all segments are separated. What is this thing? It is a 19 and a half inches long super sharp metal item with a leather handle and a leather sheath. My grandfather got it in the early 1900s from his uncle and apparently no one knew what it was. There are some maker marks on it and they are only on two of the four sides. It is 22 inches long, including the handle and sheath. I tried Google search with no results. Can anyone help identify this? It's a British World War I officer swagger stick with concealed spike blade. This piece would double up as a fierce weapon if required. It would have made an effective close quarters weapon or perhaps for use in case of capture. This is not a pen, but built like one. It's made of chased black hard rubber and the barrel has the maker's mark, Arlington Manufacturing Company, Arlington, Massachusetts. And the cap is imprinted, Vuco Sterilizer. The company primarily manufactured writing instruments, but I can confidently say that it is not a writing instrument because I collect pens from this era. Based on material and general shape relevant to pens, I would guess this is circa 1920. The size and girth are consistent with a fountain pen from the era, about five inches long and a half inch girth. Any idea what this might be? It's a thermometer case, invented by Henry Upton of Medford, Massachusetts, and patented on May 19th, 1925. The patent description says, my invention is a sterilizing holder or case for a clinical thermometer in which, while the thermometer is being carried in the case, it is immersed in a sterilizing liquid, which, when the thermometer is withdrawn for use, is confined in the case by means of a sealing member, which closes the mouth of the case, so that the thermometer may be laid down upon a table or the like, without spilling the sterilizing liquid. What is this small hand tool brought in by a co-worker here in Seattle, who asked us to identify what it is? The stamp appears to be an older Zwilling J.A. Henkels logo, used between 1900 to 1969 with the name Noxida below. The point on the backside of the round serrated edge is very sharp. Many thanks for considering my request. It's a citrus peeler from the early 1900s. To use it, you insert the hooked point into the skin at the top of the orange where the stalk would have been and gouge down the orange creating a cut skin deep. 
You do this about four times around the orange. You then insert the half moon blade under the skin where the cuts meet at the top and peel each segment of skin off. Henkels is a well-known firm based in Germany that still makes bladed instruments today. What is this thing made of thick glass? A flat bottom with feet and three holes found in an old restaurant. There are notable ridges along the outside, scalloping along the inside, and doesn't flare much from the bottom to the top. I've had it for 12 years and have never known what it was. The holes had us all baffled. I tried Googling the text and some basic descriptions, but have only gotten coffee machines. Maybe it's a part. Any information would be greatly appreciated. It's a candle warmer with a thin chrome metal lid and often paired with Pyrex glass coffee pots. Designed by Peter Muellermonk of the Silex Company and patented on September 27th, 1949. It was also used to keep foods warm like a chafing dish. What is this heavy open-ended composite material box? Approximately four by one by 1.5 feet with a 1940s USA manufacturer's mark. It appears to be made of an early composite material, perhaps compressed glass or linen and resin. It is perhaps twice as heavy as it would have been if constructed of wood of the same thickness. There is a 1940s manufacturer's mark, which makes me think it may be World War II related or perhaps housed materials that required robust and durable protection. I found it as one of three identical boxes in a village in central England. The best guess anyone locally has given to me is that the boxes may have had military use during World War II. Any ideas? It's a submarine battery cell casing made by India Rubber Gutta Percha and Telegraph Works Company. I've found that IRGP Company made rubber and vulcanized rubber products and moved some production out of London during the war. It says they moved the manufacture of ebonite products specifically to Manchester for a submarine battery box. The batteries on board World War II fleet submarines were extremely important because the engines could not run underwater. Submarines relied solely on battery power while submerged. What is this small steel corkscrew-like item with a finger ring found in Western Pennsylvania while metal detecting? It has writings on top that I cannot make out due to corrosion. It looks like a corkscrew like a bartender would use, but it's too small for that. Any ideas? Please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.